about it was about a cocaine ring that operated along the west coast of the United States uh, throughout most of the 80s. And they were funneling, um, they were selling cocaine in South Central, they were also selling it in Oakland, they were selling it in San Francisco, they were selling it in San Jose. Um, and some of the money they were making was going to support an army that the men who ran the cocaine ring worked for called the FDN. This was an army that the CIA started in 1981 and supported. Better known to us, most of us who remember it is the Contras right. in Nicaragua, Cigarette Head. The, the men that were running the cocaine ring were top officials of this Contra army. And what we found was that um, they were selling this stuff in South Central, which is you know, a predominantly black section of Los Angeles, immediately before the outbreak of the crack cocaine epidemic. They started selling powder, tons and tons and tons of powder cocaine was going into this one small area of the city. And from there, they sold it to Freeway Rick. And Freeway Rick took the powder, turned it into crack, and um, starting in 18, 1983, 1984, began distributing it to predominantly the, the gangs, the, the Crips and the Bloods in Los Angeles, and they spread it, you know, from there. From there. Now, this, since, since this has happened, you have, you have butted heads with everybody in Washington, D.C., trying to get information about the story, have you not? Yeah, we, we, we worked on this for a year, and um, it was only because, you know, some people at National Archives believe freedom of information means freedom of information. We got some documents that showed that pretty strongly there were some CIA connections. To Let's talk a little bit about those documents for a second. There's a gentleman, this figure that we talked about yesterday on the show. His name is Blandone, uh, Danilo Blandone, who was a person who was a member of the aristocracy of Nicaragua before the fall of Somoza, and then he fled and comes to the United States and decides while he's in the United States, so you can all understand this, he wants to raise money for the revolutionaries who are trying to overthrow the government to just overthrow them. So here in the United States, they try to do fundraisers and that doesn't work. And then Blandone gets a scheme, well, I can get some cocaine cheaply with some help from some of my friends and get it into the United States of America. All I need to find is somebody who can sell it. So they find a gentleman by the name of Rick Ross, who is Freeway Rick. Rick Ross comes in and starts selling cocaine at the terms of beginning one or two grams. And within weeks, two, three, four kilos a week. Within months, what was it, 10 to 15 kilos a day. Ricky Ross was selling cocaine to the point of making three to four million dollars a day. He sold so much cocaine, it hurt his fingers to count the money. Not only in Los Angeles, but in Cincinnati, in St. Louis, all the way across America. So some can say, and this is the reason why people are so angry at you in your article, is that Ricky Ross, the dope dealer, was supplied by the CIA because Blandone was an operative for the CIA, correct? Blandone and Manessas were working for an army that was a wholly owned subsidiary of the CIA. They were meeting with CIA agents. Blandone, and, 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 and this came out in court. I mean, Danilo Blandone is now a government witness. He works for the Drug Enforcement Administration. And we've paid him, I don't know, $166,000 over the last 18 months because he's such a good informant. So they put him on the witness stand in Ricky Ross's case, and he testified that in 1981, he went to Honduras, he met with the commander, the military commander of the, of the CIA's army, and he was instructed to go, set, to go raise money in California for this Contra army. And, and he was told that the ends justified the means. And those ends being sell cocaine? If well, you well, look, he was, in, he was in the room with the Nicaraguan representative of the Cali cartel, Mr. Manessas, and he was in the room with a government marketing expert named Danilo Blandone. Now, if they weren't talking about selling cocaine, I don't know what they were talking about. And this is all information they can find on a website. I have to use that web website. But on a website on the Internet. So we're going to put that up so yeah. people can go and look at those documents. Take a look at the documents yourself and, and judge it. But, but Michael, now, I mean, there's a stretch here. Here's a guy who is obviously a CIA operative, Mr. Blandone, who is working with this, this government backed army that we've kind of created in Nicaragua. But how the heck does this guy get to bring in tons of cocaine? When I say tons, I'm talking tons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight tons of cocaine weekly in the United States of America for seven years, and no one can ever catch him. Well, number one, Mr. Manessas was actually indicted in 1984. He was known within uh, my own sources in DEA told me he was known as a, El Jle de la Droga, the king of drugs. Uh, he was in more than 40 files and indicted mysteriously, and people within DEA say that it was CIA intervention that kept this sealed indictment from ever being opened. So he was well known, he was well known. The, the connection between him, Blandon, 
and uh, uh, Calero, who was the head of the Nicaraguan government in exile, is clear. There's a clear evidentiary. Well, we a picture of yeah, there's a, there's a clear evidentiary trail. Now, if you want to follow that that trail up, you have to first understand how CIA and DEA work. Uh, I was a country attaché assigned to Argentina. Now, during those years, there were people who I inherited on the payroll who were murderers. Uh, they were also on the CIA payroll. So on the CIA payroll. Not only murderers, I'm talking about mass murderers. And, and I wrote about it in books that I thought would have America marching on Washington. Nothing ever happened. How are you alive today? A, a miracle. Just absolutely. Why didn't the CIA bump you off before you came to the Montel Williams show? Because to me, they will say tomorrow, He's a coop. He's crazy. Don't believe anything he has to say. Don't worry about it. There's no conspiracy. Well, at the same time, DEA called me one of their best in a New York Times article. Uh, the, the only thing I can say, Montel, I lost my son. I lost my brother because of this phony CIA back drug flow. Somebody once said that if you don't have anything in your life to die for, you don't have anything to live for. And after losing my son, that's story of my life. God bless Gary Webb. I've been trying to tell this and other DEA agents are now coming out trying to tell this story. Let me take a break. When we come back, we have a lot of people disagree.